There are many skills that you need as a photographer, however, I feel there's one in particular that often gets overlooked, and that skill is knowing what to cut out of your image and what to leave in. Whenever we arrive at a grand scene, a landscape, a cityscape, or a bustling street with tons going on, it can be tempting to try and get everything into one photo. However, more often than not, that can result in a bit of a mess. Where the skill lies, however, is to be able to figure out what to leave in your photo and what to take out. In other words, we need to get better at removing distractions and only leaving what's important and what's interesting in the image. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to simplify your photos and how to end up with cleaner and more minimal images. We will go from the easier quick fix solutions to something that's a little bit more involved. We'll start with the easiest way one can simplify their photos and that is simply with lens choice. A longer lens will simply mean that you can have less in your frame, whereas a wider lens will let you have more. Personally, I love shooting at around 50 mil in full frame terms. It's wide enough to give context, yet it's tight enough that it means that I don't have to include everything and I can be a bit more selective with what stays within the image. However, it's worth noting that the lens choice can also be heavily reliant on the scene and on where you are. If, for example, you're hiking through the mountains, then perhaps a 50 mil might be way too wide and a 200 mil might be more appropriate. Equally, if you're walking through a tight, busy street market, then perhaps a 35 mil will be more appropriate, whereas a 50 might be a bit too tight and then you have no context. As you become better at composing, at reading the scene and figuring out how to put everything into a single shot, that's when you can start to go wider and eventually you'll be able to do the same at 28 mil, for example. The next quick fix is to change the location or the time and day of when you shoot that particular location. Let's say, for example, you love street photography, you work in a city and you commute every day. You take the camera with you, but you find that in rush hour or at lunchtime, the city's packed, it's busy, and there are so many people you struggle to isolate subjects, and generally you don't have a great time. Then may I suggest coming back to the city, but on a Sunday morning? You'll probably find not very many people, and you'll probably find it's much easier to compose, to isolate one or two subjects, and generally to have less in your scene. So try that, and then over time, as you improve, then you can start to introduce more moving pieces into your photography and then before you know it, shooting at rush hour on a Monday will become just as easy as shooting at 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Another example is if you've tried to do photography in New York, in London or in any of these popular spots for photography and you've struggled, then try to downsize to a quiet fishing village, for example. Maybe go to the seaside, go to a smaller town and go somewhere that is more picturesque. Maybe go somewhere that has more color. Maybe go somewhere that clearly is more photogenic. There's nothing wrong with going to photogenic places. Believe me, they're photogenic and popular for a reason. Point is, if you find it difficult to shoot in a particular location, don't think it's bad to change locations to something that's more picturesque or something that's a bit quieter, at least initially, until you get used to that. Then perhaps you'll come back to New York or to London or to these busy places and you'll see them in a different way. If changing lenses or light is not ideal for you or is not an option for you, then may I suggest focusing on light? Because you see, if you have good light, you can utilize that to show and hide what you want to show and hide. So here's a good example. When I was in Venice, there was a guy sitting with a hat. Behind him was an absolute mess. However, the light was hitting just the guy and everything in the background was falling into shadow. Also, the light was illuminating the foreground, which was a table that would nicely lead into the subject, which was the guy with the hat. Now, if it wasn't for the harsh light and shadow of the midday sun, then the image would be completely flat and it would just not be the same. However, because the light was perfectly exposing the subject and the shadow was perfectly hiding what's in the background, 
It made the image look minimal, clean, and in my opinion, very nice. So if you're struggling, then try to shoot in harsh light environments, or certainly in environments that have a lot of high contrast, and then you can utilize pockets of light to show what you want to show, and then utilize the shadow areas to hide everything else. Next up, try to make sure that your photos have one or two clear and distinct subjects. The viewer of your image needs to be able to look at it and straight away figure out what the main subject is. What is the main focal point? Where should they look first? You shouldn't look at an image and try to figure out what you're looking at. Now, sure, an interesting image will have you look all the way around it and pick out interesting aspects in every part of the photo. However, the main focal point or the main subject must be visible almost immediately because if it's not, chances are the viewer will just lose interest and move on to the next photo. Because remember, when someone is confused, their initial reaction is a negative one, which is one of moving to the next thing and saying no. So with that in mind, next time you're out shooting, ask yourself, does the scene have one or two clear subjects and what are they? Now we're on to one of the more powerful ways that you can simplify your images and that is through composition. Composition is a very big topic, however there are a few simple things that will make a huge difference to you. First of all is you need to shoot landscape or portrait with intention. Don't just shoot everything in landscape because it's for a photo book or for a YouTube video. Equally, don't shoot everything in portrait just because it's all for Instagram. At the end of the day, sure, the end medium of where you're gonna present your work is important, but ultimately what should dictate whether your photo is portrait or landscape is the scene and not where it's gonna go. Next up, use the environment around you to block off parts of the image that would otherwise distract from the main subject or just simply add unnecessary noise. A good example of that is my photo in Lisbon where there's a guy sitting on a bench, a bird flying through the scene and a tree blocking almost half of the image. Now, if not for that tree, you would have seen an overflowing bin half of another bench and a bunch of rubbish on the floor and it would have made the photo feel very messy, disorganized and generally wouldn't have the same visual effect as it does now. This is why I used half of the tree to block off that part of the image, therefore your attention is focused entirely on the subject. So use the environment around you to block off parts of the image that would otherwise distract because having Clean negative space is oftentimes better than having a just crap in the photo. Finally, we can use editing to further simplify the scene. The best way to do this, at least initially, is to work with the file that you have and exaggerate any contrast you might have. So perhaps you have a high contrast scene and there is still some noise in the shadows. Well, by reducing the shadows or reducing global exposure, you can hide that noise further and divert more attention onto the subject. Equally, you can use masks to divert the lighting in the image and relight the more interesting part of the image and then hide the less interesting part of the image. By manipulating the light, by manipulating the shadows, highlights, whites and blacks and the general exposure, you can drastically change where the viewer looks and where the viewer doesn't. So it's a very powerful tool that I really do encourage you to play around with. Of course, cropping, we've mentioned it before, but cropping your images is incredibly powerful. There's this whole notion that you shouldn't crop because it's cheating for some reason. That's utter garbage because cropping is a creative tool and it allows you to recompose later in editing. So for example, if you had someone on one side of the image that was actually causing more noise and more disturbance by cutting that person or that element out, you will rebalance and simplify the scene. Finally, don't be afraid to use the clone or the healing tool to remove imperfections and general rubbish. So personally, whenever I take a photo in the city, if I see chewing gums on the floor or a cigarette butt or a piece of rubbish, I will remove that using cloning. Now, this is where you can go down a complete a rabbit hole and start removing trees, start adding trees, start doing all sorts of stuff. How far you go is up to you. 
Personally, I would only remove rubbish or I would only remove something that generally shouldn't be there. Um, now, of course, if the rubbish adds to the scene in whatever way, by all means, leave it. However, for me, having a clean image is one that does not have random cigarette butts all over the place. Again, this is a topic that many would disagree on, it's fair enough, but personally, that's one easy way to simplify your scene by removing details and distractions that generally distract you. All right, that's all for this video. I hope you have found it useful. I hope you've picked a few little tips and a few suggestions that you can try next time you're out taking photos. If you do have any of your own suggestions, please use the comment section for that. Apart from that though, I will see you in the next video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I want to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using their services for over five years and I couldn't be happier with what they have to offer. I use Squarespace to publish my travel and photography blog where I write about gear, travel, photography and more. I use them for my online store where I sell my presets, travel and camera guides. Squarespace is my photography portfolio where I showcase my best images from all of the travels and locations. All of this is under one roof with a great web interface and mobile apps to keep on top of everything regardless of where I am. If you're looking for the best all-in-one solution, then I can honestly recommend Squarespace. Please click on the link in the description and use the code RomanFox for 10% off. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching.